everyone, this is Trina at John's Furniture Repair uh, in with a pretty huge project here at the shop today. Uh, we recently got commissioned by the uh, Harrow Library. We are in Canada and uh, we live in the Windsor-Essex County area. So Harrow is one of the small, gorgeous little towns that we have here in Southern Ontario. And they've got a really beautiful little library that they're been uh, re refurbishing the whole space. So we got the job of um, the furniture that they're going to save and put back in the library. So um, these spaces back here um, had laminate tops on them, which are super durable, but they're going to be going for uh, solid oak tops instead. And uh, the chairs back here too. So I'll show you a little closer up here. Okay, so I've broken down all of the uh, tables so they can fit in the shop a little better here. And these are all the maple bases that um, we're going to be reusing for the tops. Uh, this is one of the original laminate tops that I still have left. Um, and it was oak. So uh, because the uh, chairs are oak and then we have another piece over there, a coffee table that's oak, we decided to stick with oak tops because um, you don't see the bases as much as uh, the chops of the chairs and stuff like that. So it's kind of a mix of, of maple and oak in this uh, library. So these tops were just made by our mill shop. They're uh, solid oak, four, uh, five rectangular, and two four foot round tables, and then one giant uh, five foot round table for the kids table. So you have all your little kids sitting around there doing stuff. So nice and big for that. And uh, yeah, so we're going to be sealing everything just natural. And uh, I might have to do a little bit of bleaching to get a little bit of the red out of this oak, um, just to kind of match the blonde here. I think we um, got a little bit of uh, red oak going on here. So need to quiet that up a little bit. Um, but the uh, chairs here, we're just giving a sand. These are all the chairs. They look kind of weird, but the cushions go, there's big cushions that go on them uh, with hard hard backs. So it'll make a little bit more sense when the upholsterer brings the cushions back and uh, we put those back together. But those will just be getting a strip and sand and recoat. And uh, same with these guys. And then, uh, so I've got started here. They're just really easy to break down and uh, deal with that way. So I've got two tables here, two of the round tables um, that we're working on here. We don't, uh, we'll probably do all the round stuff first. And then this is one of the coffee tables that was made for the library by a, a local man. And then there's a maple coffee table as well that's in another section um, that goes with it as well. So this is the big round table's base, just prepped and ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna start with sealing the undersides of the round tables so we can uh, pop the bases on them and flip them back over. And yeah, so the other thing we're doing is the five rectangular tables are getting electrical um, uh, electrical stations put in. So three plugs and then two USB uh, units that you can uh, just pop up and then sits flat when you put it down. So we'll need to be cutting into those tops to put those units in. So they're ordered from Richelieu. So yeah, I've got lots of work. So I just had this dropped off by uh, the UPS guys. And uh, these are the power stations for the tables. So they're pretty big. It'll be a big hole that I got to cut in the uh, whole situation.
Anyway, so that'll be what we have to cut into um, the tops of the tables. I'm just gonna be going on one side so that the whole surface is mostly usable, but this is pretty flat too. It's got a nice low profile and you just click this button and these kind of slowly pop up. They're kind of cold right now, they're outside. They'll go a little faster when they're warm. But yeah, so that'll be really nice just to put away and hide. And when you need your power, everything's right for you there. Okay, so I sealed the undersides, gave them a good sand and attached the bases. Um, I had to do a little bit of toning with the base because the maple is uh, very, very yellow just from years of being maple out in the world. So what I did is kind of like a blonde uh, toner over top of things just to quiet that um, uh, really, really yellow, yellow color out. So Mohawk actually makes a color called Blonde. And then also what I've mixed is a purple uh, dye stain in, you can kind of see the color on the cloth there, in my gun. And the opposite color of yellow is violet. So uh, whenever you're trying to kill a color in something, you want to use the opposite color on the color chart and that will tone down um, your color. But still, one thing I don't like about uh, this oak is the pink color. Um, and uh, I'm like, okay, am I gonna bleach all these tops? And yes, I am, because look how much more neutral and better matched that is to uh, the, the maple base. So, um, kind of wish we would have gotten maple tops, but because we were matching it to the chairs, we had to go with oak. Um, and uh, that's what they wanted, so this is what we did. So you can kind of see here, there's a lot of like pinkish tones here. And like the whole thing has a very warm pink um, hue. And the this one here has got more of a white neutral base. And I might do two uh, layers of the wood bleach to get it nice and neutral. Um, just make sure that all that oak is nice and quiet because the chairs are pretty quiet oak. And yeah, so I'm using a, uh, this product here is circa 1850. Swing Paints makes this stuff. I get a lot of my strippers and stuff through Swing Paints. And it's just a part A, B uh, bleach system that you mix equal parts and uh, put it on with, I just use a foam brush. So I'm probably gonna do that. Um, I was kind of humming and hawing because if I do one, I have to do all of them. So I'm not gonna do the undersides for sure. I'll just seal those guys, but like the top and the edge need to be uh, done for sure because the results are definitely what I'm looking for. And uh, yeah, so it's not just a straightforward clear coat. I don't think I've ever done a straightforward clear coat these days. Um, I always need a little bit of a tweak. So I'm gonna tweak down that yellow on the maple uh, with my toning system and then bleach the tops a couple times each, I think, and uh, then neutralize that and clear coat and see where we're at. So lots of work to get them there, but uh, I think that's gonna be the best situation. All right, so I've been uh, working on all these tables here. Uh, these are the undersides of the rectangle tables that I've just got two coats of sealer on. So um, I'll be flipping those once the bases are ready to go on and I can flip them onto their feet. And uh, these two guys are just raw, ready to go. Um, that's got two coats of bleach and it's almost dry. Uh, I'll need to uh, get some vinegar mix to neutralize the bleach, but I think I'm really happy with the color. So I'm gonna be doing two rounds. Uh, this is the second round on these two tables. So yeah, it's really matching up with that maple nicely and uh, also with the other oak on the chairs. So yeah, I'm gonna let this dry for about three hours and then I'll mix up, a, a, I think it's half and half of vinegar to neutralize the bleach and then that'll have to dry overnight. 
and I'll set the heater on so it can really bake it out. And we'll give it a very light sand so we don't cut through our bleaching and uh, see their coats. So on this stuff, because it is a library, I'm gonna be using something. Uh, this is ML Campbell's Crystal. I usually use Lenmar, but I wasn't able to get it because of supply issues that we're having in the whole entire world. So this is the catalyst that you add and it's 10% um, mixed into whatever amount you're gonna mix. I'll probably do uh, a gallon at a time. So uh, about 12.8 um, ounces in a gallon. So yeah, that has to be pre-mixed and it's only good for about a 24 hour use. So you need to make sure your uh, timing is right on your your finishing and also uh, when this stuff dries there's a certain point where um, you cannot recoat it or else it will wrinkle so it's kind of a tricky finish but it's as strong as epoxy and uh, really really great at resisting chemicals and acids and all kinds of stuff cleaners and abrasives and uh, great for kitchens and dining room tables and library tables and stuff like that where we need that high uh, wear and resistance to whatever it's gonna see. So uh, these are gonna sit here and dry and I'm gonna get on to um, sanding. I've got one chair pretty much sanded and ready to go. Uh, I've got another couple of the triangle bases or rectangle bases on the bench ready to strip and sand. So I'm gonna start prepping that stuff while everything else is drying. Okay, so I'm here sanding the um, table bases and uh, this is kind of what they're turning out from where they were, this kind of thing. So uh, I kind of played around with stripping the finish off first and uh, that worked fine and made sanding easier, but it wasn't really that much easier that I think it's worth the time. I do have to do quite a bit of sanding on these legs anyways. The chairs have kind of been bumping into them at the library and they need a pretty good heavy sand there, a little bit of putty work. Um, the only thing is you need the proper sandpaper if you're gonna sand finishes off. So Festool makes uh, sandpaper that's good for finishes and doesn't clog up and swirl. If you use just a wood paper, that's made for sanding raw wood. Uh, you're gonna get your finish uh, or your sandpaper gummed up right away and you're gonna get a lot of those little swirl marks all over your piece. So I ordered a box of these guys uh, specifically for this job. Even though I keep them on hand, I was out of this one. So I'm just gonna be using my Festool sander. And this guy takes away, I would say 99% of the uh, dust. There's never any dust when I'm sanding. Oh. I was just saying something and you completely interrupted me. What a jerk. So there's basically no dust when I'm using this Festool. It has a really good suction system. I could stand next to somebody's china cabinet and I wouldn't get dust on it with this thing. Um, as long as you keep the dust bag relatively clean and the filter in good condition, and you're gonna be not breathing any dust in. So I usually don't wear a mask with this. If I'm hand sanding, I'll wear a mask uh, or any other sander, but um, I don't really need to wear one with this, even though I could, just for extra safety, which I know everybody likes me to be extra safe. But um, yeah, you won't see any dust flying up from this thing and you can uh, watch me while I do it. Just see how the paper works on the finish. Okay, so I need to mix up a neutralizer, so it's vinegar and water. So it's uh, two to one here. So I've got two quarts of water, warm water, 
And I'm just gonna pour another um, quart of vinegar. And I'll just keep this around for all the tables. That's why I'm making so much. There we go. I'll do the other two round tables and then I'll just turn the heat up a little bit overnight and they can dry. We'll just give them a light sand tomorrow. I just want to show you guys that with the bleaching, you can really see the difference when, while this is wet here, how neutral this is. More of a white oak to the red tones in this one. Kind of see it there. stripped, sanded, uh, measured and attached to the tabletops and everything was, our tables were sanded before the first coat of bleach, which is what is drying here. So uh, for sure these ones are looking really good. Uh, this is a wild top with some crazy stuff going on and this one has a few things as well. Um, so I wish they were kind of a little bit more like these guys, but we'll work with that. With some color work. So basically just letting these guys dry and uh, doing another coat of the bleach over in the circle um, chair, table department. We've got color work done. 
uh, two coats of the crystal conversion varnish and uh, that's sanded down and I'm ready for the last coat of conversion varnish on these guys and that will be done for these three big ones so these are a little bit trickier to, to finish because they're bigger so it'll be good to get these done so I'm going to throw a coat out of the the conversion varnish on there. Uh, I'm just going to mix it up and uh, shoot it and pray it works, it works good. Uh, the other thing is this coffee table, I will probably spray at the same time. We've got it all sanded and the color work done on that guy. And uh, we also have the other little um, oak coffee table. Uh, in the bleaching stage along with the rest of these guys because it was pretty yellow. So, um, yeah, it's been a lot of work and spraying the conversion varnish uh, is a little bit trickier than just your pre-catalyzed lacquer. So you have to catalyze it and you have to use the right uh, percentages of reducers and, and different things and they have to be specific to that product. And really important to use your ML Campbell care reducers or um, there's a bunch of other products too, but uh, this one's working for me here because it's specially formulated to go with this lacquer. And when you're working with conversion varnish, it can get tricky. Um, they say this guy doesn't have a recoat time, but I don't think that's true. I think anything with a catalyst that hardens, especially a conversion varnish, um, really needs to be carefully timed or else you get wrinkles, bubbles, all kinds of stuff can go wrong with this. Um, so it's really tricky to make sure you're doing everything properly and just go with what the manufacturer recommends with these guys. A little bit more of a um, professional finish than just shooting the straight pre-cat, but um, it's definitely what these tables are going to need. The other great thing about Crystal is it does not yellow, so um, a post-catalyzed lacquer definitely yellows over time. And I mean, these tables are yellow, but I'm kind of going for a little bit more of a blonde um, modern look for the library. And I don't want to add any more yellow over the years, so I'm really um, loving this stuff. And conversion varnish is really a lot thicker, and uh, when you're putting coats down, you, you don't want to go past a certain thickness. So everything is pretty precise with this finish, um, but it's a, a really excellent product, and a lot of people use this one in the, in the industry, so... Definitely a good choice for the library job here. So I'm gonna mix up a batch and spray these round tables. So the round tables are done and sitting over there and waiting. And I've just neutralized these tables. Uh, they had all the two rounds of bleach done. So you just have to wipe over your vinegar mix over top to make sure uh, to neutralize that bleach. Now, some of you might wonder why you have to do that. I don't know if you've ever had bleach get on your shirt or something. If you have a natural fiber shirt and you get bleach on it, it will actually make a hole and weaken those fibers. Uh, it does the same thing to wood. So basically, if you leave that bleach on there without neutralizing it, um, it'll weaken the, the fibers in the wood and they'll start to disintegrate and uh, finish can't hang on to nothing. So then your finish will just fall off and uh, yeah, you'll have kind of a disaster on your hands. So always remember to do this step it's pretty important uh, the other thing i did off camera um, was get the holes cut for the um, electrical thing so i can show you how that looks in there now cutting through three quarter inch i mean one one and 
a half inch um, oak, it can be pretty tough and had to kind of figure out a way to do it that was going to be clean. So let me just one handedly put this in here. So it'll just basically sit in the opening and it gets fastened underneath. And uh, so when you're using the table in the library, you have all this space to use and uh, all your media hookups will be right there for you to use. So yeah, um, this process did not go perfectly and uh, I'll never tell you why because I don't even want to talk about it. It's done. That's all I'm going to say about it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to let these dry for a day and uh, then they're going to get a light sand, a very light sand, and uh, off to the first coat of sealer and color works can start on those. This I think I'm going to bleach one more time. I ran out of bleach, so I'm waiting for that to come in the paint store. And uh, that guy back there needs one more coat of the lacquer. So it's moving along. Um, definitely a big job, but it seems to be going generally okay. And uh, yeah, so we'll get back on this one tomorrow. got all of the upholstery in for the library chairs and uh, time to put these guys back together. So uh, I think there's two colors we've got here, kind of like a purple and mixed with a teal. And uh, yeah, so kind of fun library colors. We've got everything cured and ready to go. Um, all of the electrical uh, power stations have been installed. I just need to get some channel going for those cords. So what I'm going to be using, and this was hard to track down. Uh, I've ordered one from Richelieu and it did not come and I'm still waiting. So I had to run around town and see what I could find. And uh, this is what I've come up with. So basically it'll just run down the leg to the power um, uh, plug in on the floor and hopefully um, everything will look okay like that. So I hope I got enough. I might need a little bit more, but it's going out tomorrow. So if I need more, I'll have to install it on site. Um, but yeah, let's get some of these cushions unwrapped and get them installed on the chairs. All right, everything is buttoned up and ready to ship out. Um, I've got the uh, electrical cords just tied up for now. Um, I can't really put the channels on unless I know exactly where the uh, floor plugs are. So I thought I'd just wait on that to be safe. 
Um, these guys were not super easy to put together. Um, bit of an issue with clearance here for the cushion. So it is kind of pinching it and popping it up a little bit. But um, hopefully that just wears and kind of squishes down after a while because it doesn't look the best, but it doesn't look too, too bad. Some of them are worse than others. So maybe I have to sit on some more, do some jumping. I'll call my daughter to come jump on them for a while. Anyways, they're all uh, colorful and looking good. Definitely uh, got the library vibe going on. And uh, I'm really enjoying the finish on these guys. It's super, super durable. And I feel like it's gonna be really great for uh, wear. And definitely a lot more beautiful than the tops that we're on. I think uh, I still have one over here compared to uh, fake laminate tops like that. We're doing much better. So yeah, we've got the round tables over there and the coffee table, one maple table that we did here and the little oak rectangle table there. And yeah, so this is a big job, more of a industrial finish, more of a industrial type job that uh, sometimes we get our hands into and uh, it takes a lot of uh, know-how, how to pull off some of these things and be able to, you know, pretty much build from scratch and, and uh, put a finish on that's going to be durable in a public setting. And uh, yeah, we can handle that once in a while. Definitely glad it's over though. So thanks for joining me on this one, guys. And sorry it wasn't super detailed on the process. Um, I've been a little bit stressed getting it over with and now it is. So uh, yeah, check out our other videos if you wanna see some uh, more in-depth details on finishing and stuff like that. And uh, uh, like and subscribe if you're enjoying these videos. All right, take care.